Okay, this is just a, a quick rundown of um, basic rundown of media encoder uh, in the CC package here. I'm going to show you how to use a media encoder uh, if you want to do it from Premiere or if you want to just uh, drag files into this and use it, you can as well. I've got the program, I've got the software open here right now. I am in Media Encoder, encoder 2014. One way of uh, getting to, I'm going to show you kind of three different ways of getting files into Media Encoder. I'm going to go to go to Premiere. One is directly from Premiere. If you've got a project to export directly uh, to Media Encoder from Premiere, um, and the reason why you want to use uh, Media Encoder instead of Premiere's export is because um, if you export directly out of Premiere, it'll lock up the program while you're using it. If you need to keep editing while you're exporting, you can send it to Media Encoder and let Media Encoder do the encoding, and then uh, you can go back to Premiere and keep on editing. So I'm going to hit Apple M or Control M on a PC or bring open the media export window. Now you can do all your settings and export individual video file, files here, but like I said, it will lock up uh, media or it'll lock up uh, Premiere and you won't be able to edit in Premiere until it's done exporting. So I'm going to go down and hit right here Q. Q will add this to the media encoder here. So I'm just going to click on Q. After a couple moments, uh, Media Encoder will open and it will you will see this file added to Media Encoder. Now that is one way of adding here. Uh, I'm going to show you another way. I'm going to actually just close Premiere completely here. <clears throat> I'm going to go to Media Encoder. I'm actually just going to delete that. I'm going to highlight it and hit delete. Get rid of it. Another way of doing it is going up to uh, File and you can add Premiere Pro sequences as well. This usually ta this sometimes takes a little bit longer. It usually seems to act faster if you do it uh, right out of Premiere. Uh, but I'm going to go to my project file. What you're going to do is find a Premiere project file right here. This is the one that I was working off of. And it's going to open up all your sequences in that project file. i got a lot of sequences in this, but there's one uh, right there as my main edit right there. So I'm going to select my main edit out of that project file and hit import and it will add that file here it'll add that sequence uh, to media encoder get ready to export to to uh, to some sort of codec whether you're exporting to a uh, ProRes file to a DNX file to H.264 to uh, any sort of codec you want to there's a whole list of presets over here of items you might be wanting to export to uh, now another way of doing this I'm going to delete that as well uh, let's say you've got some finished uh, video files you want to add to uh, Media Encoder, like this here. I've, uh, in another tutorial, I showed how to export out of, out of Premiere. Here is an H.264 MP4. If you want to compress it even more, uh, you can grab that and just simply drag it over and drop it in. You can do a whole bunch of different video clips. Um, you can do footage as well. So if you want to grab different items and drag in here, I mean, you're going to have a bunch of different files uh, to export. Out of, uh, out, out of Media Encoder. So you can add individual files, you can add you can add a Premiere sequence, you can export from Premiere as well. In fact, uh, if you're trying to batch export, if you want to do a bunch of offline files, if you're doing offline editing and you want to export a bunch of files out of Premiere, this is also kind of a good way to go. Let me show you one other way of doing this. Uh, say you want to export out a bunch of different files. Say you've got some 5K red footage and you want to export it out to 1920 by 1080 so you can edit it quickly on a laptop. And then later on we'll be eventually reconnected with uh, video files. Uh, what you can do is you can go to my red footage here. Let me find my red footage. Here's a bunch of red clips. Uh, they've added a nice little batch exporter to Premiere here. You can just go and highlight all these. Highlight all these clips here. I'm going to batch export all these files out to smaller files. Like I said, if you want to do offline editing, just highlight all those and do Command M. And it will bring up a quick little setting window here uh, before it sends it to media to uh, media encoder. And then you can choose, say, I want it to go to H.264. Um, the YouTube is a pretty standard setting. Let's say 1920 by 1080. Uh, there's a good little MP4 setting. And let's even take this down to megabits per second to 10 megabits per second. Um, so the file size is kind of small in these. Uh, now all you have to do is hit Q and it will send all those files with that basic setting to Media Encoder. So there's a few different ways of getting files. This is kind of a batch exporter if you're doing offline footage and you want to export a bunch of footage to, um, to Media Encoder. All those files have now been added to uh, Media Encoder. Um, now all we have to do and go and the settings are all set to that same codec that we did, but uh, all we'd have to do is change the output location here. So let's show you some settings over here now. I'm going to actually get rid of all that stuff. Don't need it right now. 
and I'm going to add a Premiere sequence here. Grab the same one I had before. <clears throat> okay, now let's show you how to um, do some settings in here. Uh, first of all, over here on the left, you've got uh, the, the basic uh, codec that you want to export out to, the basic file type that you want to export out to. If you want to do QuickTime video, and actually you can just click, if you click on this right here, if you, if you pull this arrow down, it'll just have the basic types here. It's kind of like a little quick select menu. If you click on, and same over here, if you click on that, you have some basic presets there. But if you click on this or this, it's going to open up the same window. You click on this here, it brings up all the settings for it. Same as this, click on that, it brings up all the settings. So basically, clicking on this and this will do the same thing. But this here will narrow it down to the type. And oftentimes, if you're going to YouTube, I'm going to show kind of the way to get it to YouTube. You're going, let's say this was on QuickTime before. Um, but if you're going to ProRes, if you're on a Mac and you're going to ProRes, I'll show you how to do ProRes as well. But uh, say we want to do H.264. You're going to click H.264. And by default, or it can premiere, it does match to source, which matches the source settings. Uh, I'm going to uh, click on this. Uh, and it's going to bring up a little window here. Actually, you can if you're just doing a quick basic one, you can click on the arrow and hit Y for YouTube. It'll go down to the YouTube and settings, and you can just say YouTube 1080p HD. And uh, that is really all you have to do there if you go into YouTube. Then you can click on the name here. This will find the location and name. I'm going to go into file, Final Movie, and I'm going to call it just Scene 1 Edit Save, or whatever you want to call it. So it saved that location and that name, and now all I have to do is press Play. Then all you should have to do is click play and it will start encoding the movie. Um, all right, but I'm going to bring in a video clip here. I'm going to grab uh, this. Let's grab this. Okay. So I'm going to grab a 4K file here. I'm going to compress it for YouTube. I'm going to drag it into Media Encoder. And then the way I did that, I just went to my Finder here and I grab it and you can just drop it off right in, into this window. So you can kind of move that to the side, drag and drop that in. And now I'm going to change this. I've already got it on H.264, so that's pretty standard there. This is the settings that I had before. So H.264, YouTube HD, 1080 HD. Now, if you want to fine-tune some of these settings, you're going to have to click on this little item here. Um, let me bring my playhead over in the middle of the clip here so you can kind of see this little uh, music video we've got here. Uh, now, if you, if you want to tweak some of these settings, over here on the side, you're going to have this uh, video window. Effects you can pretty much ignore because usually people are doing their effects in, in Premiere or their editor. But I'm going to go into video. Now you can change resolution. You can change frame rate if you want to convert it. Usually you won't be doing that. <clears throat> you're going to be change, You're going to be leaving uh, pixel aspect ratio pretty much the same. Almost everything HD these days is 1.0 pixel aspect ratio, square pixels. Uh, but down here is really important right here. So uh, a few things that's really important. Resolution is important. Um, you got to know what resolution you're going to. Frame rate's important. Over here, you'll notice this thing is not check marked right there. The resolution is different from my original 4K footage. Uh, so the 4K footage, because my original footage is 4K footage, and we're going to be taking it down to YouTube, which is 1920 by 1080. Um, so I'm not going to check mark that. If I do check mark that, it's going to match the resolution of the clip that I'm bringing in here. Um, which I don't, I don't want to do. I want it 1920 by 1080. <clears throat> Over here, frame rate. Frame rate, I do want it the same. 23.976, about 24 frames per second. I want that uh, same match frame rate. I do want matched progressive scan. I want to match my square pixels as well. It was on that as a standard anyway. Um, well, we move on down here to the bitrate settings, and this is going to be important as well. Um, we've got a, a bitrate encoder as constant bitrate, variable bitrate, variable bitrate to pass. Uh, this is going to be the quickest export. This will be kind of the medium export, and this will be the longest export. It'll take the longest time to do, and this one will be the quickest. The reason why is because the constant bitrate, you just set it at how much data is contained in the clip, how much quality there is in the clip, basically. Um, most DSLRs shoot around like 25 to 35 megabits. They don't need all that color, inf color information, especially red footage does not need all that original color information once you've done color correction. You can remove the unnecessary color uh, information. But um, 
So if you do, usually 16 is a good suggestion for YouTube, 16 megabits per second. If you want to make sure it's really high quality, you can go up to about 20 megabits per second or 30. Uh, but constant bit rate, if you're doing constant bit rate, you usually want about 30 megabits per second at least to kind of maintain the quality um, of the original clip to match at least DSLR settings. Uh, but the, And this will encode really fast, but the file size, if you move down here, you'll see the file size is going to be around 603 megabytes, kind of large. If I take this to 16, the original YouTube suggestion, notice it's gone down to 324 megabits for a five minute music video. Um, so that there is going to tell you about what your size is. And if you put this up to 30, that'll be great, but uh, the file is going to be huge. So uh, if you don't want such a huge file, you can do variable bitrate one pass. It'll change the, quali the, the quality of the clip throughout as it gets more dynamic or needs more color information. It's going to bring up the quality. Um, and you can put this around 16 and you'll be fine. Um, target bitrate is what it's trying to is what it's trying to go for, but when it needs to take up the quality, you can put a maximum bitrate around 20. And this is all in effort to kind of keep the file size down. It's giving you the estimated file size there. Still, uh, now if you do two pass, notice the file size is going to say about the same. And this is going to do a two pass uh, where it goes through the footage once and sets keyframes where there's more action and more color information needed. And then it will go back and, and uh, do the actual encode based on those keyframes. This is going to be the highest quality, a variable bitrate, two pass, at least for the size of the file. This will keep uh, your goal of compression is to keep the file size down while keeping the quality up. This will do that. This will keep the file size down as much as possible while keeping the quality of your video up uh, with a variable two, two pass. Uh, so if you got the time, if you're not in a hurry, I'd say always use variable bitrate two pass. Uh, and if you're going to YouTube, around 16 megabits per second is good. Uh, you might want to say a maximum bitrate about 20. So if, it really, if there's a lot of action, a lot of movement in your footage, uh, if it's somebody just like a talking head, you can set these both at 16 and you'll be fine. But 16 and 20 is good for something with a lot of dynamics. This has a lot of light moving and a lot of movement. So there we go. And I'm going to click on this and uh, find a location. Uh, I'm just going to go to my desktop and I'm going to call this Music Video Final. Uh, I'm going to call this 1080 YouTube because you know, so I know what this is. My 1080 YouTube uh, video that I'm exporting. So I'm going to hit Save and it set that name and that location. And now if I just hit OK. It has all the settings in there. It's changed it from the YouTube preset to my custom preset that I just made. And actually, you can save these presets if you wish as well. You can go over here to your preset browser here. And it's got all those presets. Those are those ones that came down the list, the YouTube settings and everything are listed also over here. You can come over here and save this. Say, uh, click on the plus, And I'm going to go to my uh, preset name here. And I'm going to change this to YouTube custom higher quality or something like that or two pass or something like that whatever you want to call it two pass so that those are uh, those, those are my settings right there so um, scratch all that okay so if you want to add a preset over here you can click on if you want to add a preset uh, and add it over here in your presets. You can click on your little custom here and bring it up and you can uh, you have to do it. You don't do it in your preset window here. You're going to do it in your export settings and right here you can click the save preset and you can save this as your own preset. It's going to say what do you want to name this? I'm going to call it uh, YouTube to pass high quality or, or 1080 or something like that. We'll call it 1080. There we go. Just something to remember this and I'm going to hit OK <clears throat> and hit OK down here. And now my YouTube setting has been saved right there under presets. So now if I bring another file in, let's bring this second file in right there with the story. We're going to add this music video with the story to it. So I've got two different files here on compressing. Um, if these settings are different, you can just simply grab this preset, drag it over, drop it right on the file. Oh, that actually added one right there. If you drag it on the, on the name right here, it'll change those settings. You can actually do several encodes on the same file here. I can say I've got my ProRes preset. I put that there as well. It's added two encodes. It's going to encode this file. Oops. It's going to encode it to YouTube 2Pass and one to ProRes, my pre preset for ProRes. Uh, so you can have all these different types of files. You can grab it for cell phones, go down to devices. Let's go to an Android, grab tablet, drag, drag and drop it, add it to that as well. Um, we can
can go to YouTube 480. I don't know why you do that, but you can set all these settings when you hit play. It's going to encode this file to all these settings and it'll name it whatever each one of your names is here. So, um, so pretty cool the way that this works. And while it's actually encoding, you can keep adding files to, to, to finish. Let's show for kind of a final step here if you're encoding files to uh, ProRes. Um, one reason you might want to do that is, like I mentioned, offline editing. So let's show, so let's show a batch process sending out a whole bunch of clips to ProRes here. Uh, you have to do this on a Mac. If you have a PC, you cannot encode to, um, uh, you cannot encode your files to ProRes. You can read ProRes on a on a PC as long as you have QuickTime installed, but you cannot write to ProRes. Unfortunately, it's too bad because ProRes is a great codec. It's the only reason I own a Mac. Um, I guess I'm kind of kidding, but anyway. Uh, so I'm going to highlight all these, and we're going to send them over to um, to Media Encoder. First of all, it's going to bring up these export settings from Media Encoder. I hit Apple M, bring all, all brought up in this window. I'm going to pull down my format here. I'm going to change it to QuickTime. ProRes is a QuickTime video. Now it's got DV. It doesn't seem to have ProRes under these presets under here, so you have to kind of create your own uh, preset. So what I'm going to do is go down under a video tab. You will see a video codec pull down here. I'm going to pull this down, and there's a whole bunch of ProRes settings installed in QuickTime uh, on my machine here. <clears throat> I've got ProRes Regular, ProRes HQ. Uh, uh, these these 422s are going to be um, uh, smaller file sizes than the 444. This is basically ProRes RAW right here. It's really huge files. Uh, proxy files, which is really smooth. This is kind of the lowest quality of the ProRes, which is really nice, actually high quality. I believe it's around, I want to say, 50 megabits per second. This is around 100 megabits per second. They list it online. I can't remember what it is. It's like 150, and then it keeps on going up. The quality keeps on climbing until you get to RAW, which is like 300 megabits, 350 megabits per second for the 444, which is insanely large. Uh, so I'm just going to go proxy, which is, let's see if I was right, actually. Aha, uh -huh, I found a chart on Apple's website that shows how many megabits per second uh, for ProRes 444 at different resolutions, uh, 422 and 1920 by 1080. Uh, ProRes regular four, uh, 422 is around 147. Uh, ProRes LT is around 85, I guess around 100, so I was pretty darn close there. Uh, and 38 for proxy, which is around a little bit higher quality than DSLR. Um, <clears throat> there you go. So ProRes LT is actually a really nice high quality. Uh, file, but uh, so I'm going to go to ProRes. Um, I'm going to go to ProRes Proxy, but I want to match the resolution here. So what I'm going to do, and uh, this these files do not have audio. I can leave audio. Actually, they do because it's red footage, but there's just an audio recorded on it. But I'm going to do export video and audio, so these files are identical. I am going to match source on everything here. I'm going to click match source. And it's going to base everything off the source. It's going to base my resolution, which uh, these files are 4K, so it's going to base these, it's going to make these files uh, 4K files. It's going to match the frame rate, going to match uh, the field order, going to match the aspect ratio, and everything. I just like matching everything on ProRes. Uh, that's really all you have to do: is set your ProRes quality and match all your source settings, so it does um, so it matches resolution and everything else. I'm going to hit Q. It'll send all these files with my ProRes settings. If you want to save those ProRes settings under your presets, you just click on Custom, go into the window under Custom, same as I showed you before, and save it as a preset, which I've already done up here. I've got a ProRes. It's a ProRes LT, uh, no audio, 4K. So it's a pre preset that I've already done um, for another type. But what I'm going to do here is I want to save these all to the same location. I'm going to select one clip, then hit Command-A and select everything. Click on the name and location here. And final location, I'm going to go to my desktop, make a new folder, call this ProRes, oops, offline or proxy. Hit choose. And all that location, all these files are going to be saving in the same location. Now, when we're ready to go, the last part is after you got all your settings done, you're just going to hit play. And now it will go through each individual clip and it will encode each individual clip. It'll put it into that folder and all my files will be saved. Uh, any file that you've done, either to, to YouTube clips or to ProRes or any settings, mobile phone, uh, iPad, whatever settings that you have over here under your presets, you can um, 
you can add those settings to any individual clips. Uh, and this is great for raw footage here, this ProRes setting, because now I can do uh, offline editing and later on reconnect it to the original high quality files. So, yeah, well, so um, if you have any questions, let me know. And um, that's kind of Media Encoder in, in a nutshell there.